Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us today as we discuss all things cargo insurance. You know, today's webinar entitled How to Protect Your Business with Cargo Insurance. And you're going to see that it says it correctly. It's about protecting your business. It's not about just protecting the cargo that you're working with. But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about housekeeping. Uh, you will receive a recording for the webinar. So don't worry about it. If somebody is that you said, oh, my goodness, so-and-so should have been here to listen to this, we're going to send you a recording so you can share it with them and listen to it again. We're going to share a lot of information today. And once again, send us your questions through the Q&A panel. We do have a Q&A panel. There's a chat and there's also a Q&A. Just send it in there. We have people sitting down waiting to answer those questions. And we're also going to have some time to do that at the end where we will go ahead and take some questions, answer them live. That way we can go ahead and get those answers. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, my name is Jose Barahona. I am one of the vice presidents uh, here in Magai Corporation. So I'll be your host for today. And today we have two amazing people with us. We have Ms. Vanessa Donado, our senior sales executive with Magai Insurance Services. Hi, Vanessa. How are you? Hi, Jose. I'm doing great. Happy to be here and talk some insurance. You know, you always make insurance fun, Vanessa. So I'm so excited for you to share with our customers. And we also have Heather Santander. He's our Chief Operating Officer for Magai Insurance Services. Heather, how are you? Hi, Jose. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Heather. You know, it's always nice to actually talk to our clients and letting them know what other services are there for them to work with and just freight forwarding, right? And during this webinar, we're going to cover cargo insurance types, freight forwarding liability, general average, the claims process, and strategies and solutions for risk mitigation. You know, a lot of times, most of us, when we think about insurance, we think after the fact, and we don't think it as, as we should, being able to prevent and help our business grow. So as we move on, what is cargo insurance, right? Cargo insurance 101, it protects your business from loss or damage while it's in transit, right? And it safeguards your, uh, you from financial impact on unforeseen events that may occur during shipping. Now, when we look at cargo insurance, right, there's a lot of key terms and concepts. And Vanessa, a lot of these sometimes can, can get lost, right? Can you explain a little bit of some of these key terms and concepts, Vanessa? Sure, Jose. Um, there are, um, these uh, are insurance key terms you should know if getting cargo insurance or dealing with cargo insurance industry. So let's talk about the first key term. Uh, it would be premium. Think of the premium as the price you pay for your cargo insurance. Just like buying a ticket for a movie or a concert, you pay a certain amount to get the coverage you need. The premium can vary based on factors like the value of the cargo, the type of coverage, and the risks involved. Our second key term would be insured value. This is like the worth of the cargo you're insuring. It's the value you and the insurance company agree upon. And it's the maximum amount the insurance will pay out if something happens to your cargo. Third key term is deductible. And this one you might have heard before. A deductible is like a small fee you agree to pay if you make an insurance claim. Let's say you have a $100 deductible and your cargo gets damaged and the repair cost is $500. You'll pay $100 and the insurance will cover the remaining $400. It's a bit like sharing the cost with the insurance company. Now, do all assureds have to pay a deductible in all claims, Vanessa? No, not at all. Deductibles are only applied if the insurance conditions mention this in the certificate. This is why you need to read the conditions on the policy, because there are certain types of cargo that are subject to deductibles. So always be on the lookout for the conditions. Our fourth key term would be peril. Peril means a danger or risk that could cause harm to your cargo. These dangers could be like accidents, theft, natural disasters, or even mistakes made during transportation. Our fifth key term, exclusion. And as the word says, any exclusions are things that the insurance doesn't cover. It's important to know these because if something happens that falls under an exclusion, the insurance won't pay for it. You know, that's interesting, Lisa, because I think if I have insurance, it's going to pay for it. Can, can you give us some specific examples of vehicles exclusions? Yes. Um, one of the exclusions for vehicles is glass breakage. 
So if a vehicle arrives at destination with the windshield broken, you won't be covered. The insurance company won't pay for that. You got that, right? Got it. Understood. Okay. So um, let's continue with our sixth key term, claim. A claim is like asking the insurance company to help you when something goes wrong with your cargo. If your cargo gets damaged, lost, stolen, you file a claim to get compensated for the loss. It's a bit like saying, hey, something bad happened. I need your help to make things right. And our seventh and last key term for today is subrogation. Subrogation is a bit like teamwork between you and the insurance company. If the insurance pays for a loss, they might try to get back some of that money from others who might be responsible for the damage. It's like the insurance company helping you get compensation from those who might have caused the harm. I love that, Vanessa. You know, it's amazing. And I love how you said that this is teamwork between that, right? Because a lot of times as freight forwarders, you know, when my time as a freight forwarder, I always felt like I was by myself in dealing with all these different things, especially when we talked about the different types of insurance, right? No, let's talk about insurance because this is very important. Marine cargo insurance policies can be tailored to meet the needs of the company, right? That handles a good. So look at my back, back days, right? Every company had something different. Uh, what would be these type of coverages when we look at all risk, FPA, you know, Vanessa, it's important to understand these types of coverages, right? Absolutely. It is very important. And uh, we have two types and uh, that would be all risk and FPA, but it's also called free of particular average. So all risk cargo insurance is like having a comprehensive shield for your goods during transit. It covers a wide range of risks and perils that your cargo might face. This includes accidental damage, theft, and loss. It's the most inclusive type of coverage you can get for your cargo. If something happens to your goods while they're being transported, all risk insurance will likely have you covered, as long as the event is not specifically excluded in the policy. And now on the contrary, FBA cargo insurance, it's a bit more specific. It covers damage or loss to your cargo only if the damage is substantial. In other words, FBA insurance comes into play when the damage or loss reaches a certain level, typically a higher threshold than what might be considered minor. It doesn't cover every little thing that could happen to your cargo like all risk does. Instead, it focuses on significant events that result in significant damage or loss. So Jose, to summarize in simple terms, all risk cargo insurance is like having a safety net that protects your cargo from a wide range of accidents, big or small. FBA cargo insurance, on the other hand, is more selective, only providing coverage for substantial damage or loss. I know that makes that makes total sense, man. So when we look at cargo insurance, it plays a real fundamental role in logistics operations. You know, I look back at all the different shipping needs that my customers had. And for me, that was a peace of mind for shippers, right? Tone sign needs and freight forwarders. And in reality, we have all of those people playing a part when you look at cargo insurance. Cargo insurance is not just for you as a freight forwarder, it involves other people. So Vanessa, can you explain the importance of how each of these roles plays differently, right? Of course, Jose. Um, for, shipper, for shippers, cargo insurance is like a safety net for them. It protects their goods while they're being transported. Imagine if their goods got damaged, lost, or stolen during the journey. Without insurance, shippers could lose a lot of money. Cargo insurance makes sure that if something goes wrong, shippers won't have to bear the full financial burden. So it lets them ship with confidence knowing their items are covered. Now, consignees can also benefit from cargo insurance. Let's say they get their goods in bad condition or not at all because of accidents or other problems during transport. Cargo insurance helps consignees get compensated for their losses. This is important because they rely on these goods for their businesses or personal needs. Insurance gives them a way to recover if things go south. And for freight forwarders, it's also crucial. You know, freight forwarders are like travel agents for shipping. 
They handle the logistics of getting goods from point A to point B. These forwarders often take responsibility for the goods they handle. Cargo insurance is crucial for them because it covers any unexpected issues during transportation. It helps them avoid financial trouble if accidents, delays, or other problems occur. So with insurance, they can offer better service to shippers and make sure things go smoothly. In simple terms, cargo insurance is a safety shield for everyone involved in shipping. It ensures that no matter what happens, whether it's damage, loss, or other accidents, they won't be left dealing with big financial headaches. You know, it's amazing how you say that delays, accidents, those are problems that we're facing, you know, seems like it's on the news every more often, right? As we see that. So thank you, Ronnie. That's that's amazing. When when we look at forwarding and the importance, you know, I love how you said it, they're like travel agents, you know, that's very lucrative. What we do is very important. And we play a crucial role in movement of that cargo. Um, but the liability of damaged cargo during transfer can be very, can be very based on, on several factors, right? In terms of the contract, industry practices, applicable laws. You, know, you gave us an example, right? With a broken windshield. That, that, that's not covered. So those are the things that we're learning. Now, Heather, can you give us an overview of freight forward liability and cargo movement? Absolutely, Jose. It's important to understand their responsibility in this transaction. So let's start with the freight forwarder's role. The freight forwarder is like a middle person between the shippers and the carriers. They make sure things get from the origin to their destination. So freight forwarders handle stuff like finding space uh, for the cargo, setting up transportation, and taking care of paperwork. Now, when it comes to the cargo getting damaged, there are a few situations where the freight forwarder might be responsible. Let me explain a bit. First, if the freight forwarder messes up or doesn't do things carefully and that causes the cargo to get damaged, they could be held accountable. For example, if they don't secure the cargo properly or give wrong instructions that led to damage, it is on them. Also, it depends on the agreement between the shipper who is sending the stuff and the freight forwarder. If the contract says what the freight forwarder should and shouldn't do, and they break those rules, they might be responsible. Sometimes the freight forwarder contract has rules about how much they will pay if something goes wrong. But these rules might not always be enforced depending on the laws in that place. Uh, And occasionally the freight forwarder gets help from other people like subcontractors or agent to get the the shipping done. If these helpers mess mess up and cargo and cause the cargo damage, it could still be forwarders' responsibility depending on their agreement. By the way, most freight forwarders have insurance that covers them and cargo in case of anything goes wrong during shipping. This insurance helps protect everyone in both in case of loss of damages. Hope that clears in top. Do you have any questions? You know, no, for me, it makes it very clear. Uh, hey there, I think one of the things that we remember is, you know, hey, I'm co-loading with such and such a person, so it could be their problem. But in reality, if I'm co-loading, it's it, it's there, right? It's As long as I have that cargo, I could be liable for it. So it's important for me to do that and keep keep that in mind. So thank you. Now, when you talk about losses, you know, some of the biggest challenges that we have are, are and we always think about these catastrophic losses due to sunken ships or, or machinery, right? Extreme weather events that are happening. Hey there, which of these are the largest concern for your industry currently, right? Because you have to remember, we only see maybe that big ship that is on fire, but these things are happening more and more. What are some of these concerns that you have? I'm on, I'm on those cargo losses that you have there. I will say that general average is the the one that caused more concern to the customer because they don't really understand what it is. Wow, that's interesting that you say that. Uh, General average, can you explain what that means? Because for me, general average was if something happens in the ship, I'm going to be compensated or I'm going to help compensate someone. Can you dig a little deeper here into that? Absolutely. So in simple terms, general average, it is a rule in the world of shipping. Think of it. It as a form of, of teamwork on the high seas. Imagine there is a big problem that could sink the whole ship and ruin the cargo. To prevent the potentially catastrophic situation, the captain voluntarily 
sacrifices part of the ship or cargo. In this case, everyone who's part of the journey, like the shipper owner and the cargo owners, proportionately share the losses resulting from the sacrifice. So if you are a cargo owner, you might have to pay a bit to help out. They figure out how much based on the value of your stuff compared to all the cargo on board. The payment happens before you get your cargo back. If you have insurance, the insurance will handle it. If you don't have insurance, you will have to pay your own share. That's amazing. Thank you very much for, for kind of taking us through that. Because for me, right, as a, as a forwarder in the past, it was always, oh, yeah, general average, there's some sort of insurance there. But in reality, understanding that whole process. Uh, let's talk a little bit about claims. Because now you've kind of moved into, hey, this may happen, right? When it comes to claims, hey, there, what would be the first thing to do? You know, sometimes we get confused. We don't know where to start, right? What are the process? What are some of the things that you can share with us? You are absolutely right, Jose. So this is very important. Not always we, I mean, our customer have clear what they need to do in case of a claim. So what, what they need to do, it's just the following step. So when they see a, a, an incident to happen, when they see a damaged cargo, they have to immediately report the incident to the insurer or the broker, in that case, to, to us if they're working with us, and the carrier. So it's very important to, do, to send an email or a letter to the carrier letting them know that there is a damaged cargo. And after the, the, the cargo, it's, it's document, the damage is documented. So we need to gather all documentation possible to prove the damage. So in this case, we need to have the letter of intent sent to the carriers and their response, the original commercial invoices to prove the value of the cargo, the original ocean bill of laden or airway bill or, or pro-way bill in case of, of a landing a type of transportation, packing list, delivery receipt showing the exception. This is very important. As soon as you notice the, the damage, just make sure you document it in the delivery receipt. So we also will need all the uh, warehouse receipts, air, airport loading and unloading report, and the color um, color photograph. It is important to take photos and videos of the damaged cargo, not necessarily the damaged boxes. Actually, the cargo is what we need to prove that got damaged. So after we gather all this documentation, the insurance company claim, I mean, start to assess, assess the, the claim. And if the claim is very complex, they might initiate an investigation and appoint a surveyor. You know, if the claim is simple, so they can take the decision very, very fast. So once they take a decision and the claim is approved, the insurance company calculates the settlement amount in accordance with the policy terms and conditions. The settlement may, may cover the cost of repair, replacement, or actual cash value of the cargo, depending on the policy terms. And once the settlement amount is agreed upon, the insurance company sends the payment. Is that clear, Jose? Yeah, that makes that makes it sort of clear. You know, it's amazing how the long list of notifying and gathering the documentation requirements that you went through, and it really plays well with having a system that can generate this documentation for you. So you mentioned packing list, bill of lading, warehouse receipts, right, the freight charges, invoices, all things that we have in our complete set of documents. But I really love how you said, hey, we need to have photographs of the condition of the goods. We as free forwarders, we like to take pictures of the boxes, how the container looks, the outside. Understanding and being clear that it's actually the condition of the goods on arrival is important. So thank you, Heather. That was really, really well. You know, Bonnie, we just heard Heather go through the process, claims how it is. Can you give us some helpful tips to successfully file a claim because that's the other part of it, right? Great, now I have this issue. I have all the necessary documentation. I have it ready. How do I file? What happens next, right? Sure, yes. As Hayter mentioned previously, before the shipment, make sure you maintain all records of the cargo, including the packing list, uh, invoices, and photographs of how the cargo was packed or stowed in container. And then again, this is before shipping. Now, during transit, if any incident occurs, immediately document the situation. You know, Again, take photographs of the damaged cargo and its packaging to be able to understand the difference 
of how it left origin and how it arrived at destination. These photos are very important because they can confirm that damages occur during transit. Immediate notification is probably the most crucial of all the tips that I wanted to mention. As soon as you discover an issue with the cargo, promptly inform your insurance provider and send a written letter to the carrier informing you will be starting a claim. And my last tip is to provide accurate information to the insurance company because any discrepancies might lead to delays or complications in processing the claim. Perfect, Manny. No, that, that's very clear. And I think you guys are really hitting on some key points, right? Making sure that we know how the cargo arrived, uh, how the cargo was shipped, how it arrived at destination and timing of this, right? I think that in freight forwarding, and you know this, Manny, it, time is money, right? We, everyone says that, but in freight forwarding, it really does, right? If that cargo doesn't leave on time, if that cargo is damaged, somebody has to bring uh, the necessary information to make that happen. So thank you. Now, let's talk about some real life scenarios. You know, hey there, you have some scenarios because I, I always say, well, hey there, you know, insurance, it's it's a backup plan, right? It's, sometimes we don't see the importance of that. Can you show us some real life scenarios so we can relate and understand the importance of having cargo insurance? Absolutely. I'm just going to add a little bit to, to what you said. It's until you need it. It's when yeah. you actually, yeah. you actually, you know, think about insurance. So these are real case, uh, real scenarios, you know? So the top, the top left uh, actually is a Marx Holman, uh, Hon, Hon, Honam um, vessel. So on March, 2018, the container the container ship experienced a severe fire in the Arabian Sea. The fire led to a situation where the ship captain decided to deliberately sink a portion of the containers on board to prevent spread of the fire and stabilize the vessel. The decision was taken to save the ship, its crew, and the remaining cargo. As, as a result, a general average was declared, and all parties with a stake in the voyage, including cargo owner, owners, share the financial burden of the sacrificed cargo and other related expenses. The one on the right is the Grande America. So the container ship Grande America um, caught fire in 2019 and in the Bay of Biscay and eventually sank. So the ship was carrying a variety of cargo, including vehicles and hazardous material due to the risk of pollution and the need to address potential environmental impact, a general average declaration was issued. This required cargo owners to contribute to the cost of the salvage and environmental uh, protection efforts. That's amazing. You know, it's amazing how both of these, you talked about general average and making tough decisions to either save the ship and crew or completely losing the ship. Bonnie, you also have a couple of, of scenarios, right? You have one specific that, that comes to mind, correct? Yes, um, I have a very interesting scenario that made the news, and you all probably heard about this. This was last year in February. Uh, the Felicity Ace, a cargo ship carrying nearly 4,000 cars across the Atlantic Ocean, caught on fire. The fighting the fire on the vessel was very difficult. And interestingly, the electric vehicles aboard the ship may have made this even harder because of the lithium batteries. So after days of burning, the vessel finally sank. So to make the story more interesting, among the cars were like 561 Volkswagen electric, the latest models, more than a thousand Porsche units, 189 Bentleys and limited edition Lamborghinis. So we are talking about over 400 million lost in this vessel. That's just amazing. I can guarantee you that none of my cars were in there because I don't think they ship Jeeps. But <laughs> tell me a little bit about what happens. What's the recourse for clients expecting these cars? That's a lot of loss. Well, technically the vehicles don't yet belong to the customers until they're delivered. So they still belong to the automaker. So good news is that personal auto insurance didn't have to kick in. In this case, the commercial insurance policies of all these auto manufacturers and the cargo companies addressed the losses. So it was a 
for the disaster, it was good news for the auto manufacturers, but you know, it was really bad news for the insurance company. That, that makes total sense. That's amazing. The importance of insurance and how it plays in different, you know, how it's being shipped and whatnot. So wonderful. All right. So um, we have all in this picture, you can see on screen, it's, it, it's insane. And this happens all the time. People, this is real life scenarios. It is not a joke. It is completely crazy. This truck, it's transporting rolls of paper on a single pallet. And the concept is very simple, packaging. Jose, what do you think went wrong here? I gotta say that truck has some really good brakes, first of all. But what went wrong for me, Vanessa, is the fact that they didn't strap this correctly to the pallet, right? So they didn't secure that correctly. There's not enough film to maintain the integrity of that pallet. Yes, you are correct. This would never be covered by any insurance provider if packaging is not appropriate for shipping. So let's see our next example. Um, this is a container full of printers. It all starts in how the shipper or the freight forwarder packs the cargo and stows the container. Cargo packed this way is not going to even make it to the port. Weight was not considered in the stowage. This is double stacked. There's no straps to secure all pallets to the ground or the sides of the container, neither the amount of shrink wrap to maintain the printers in place was considered. So all these crazy scenarios are very common and you need to keep in mind that this would never be covered by any insurance provider. And that's our scenarios for today. You know, that's amazing, Bonnie, because I think sometimes we believe that, hey, it left my dock. I don't have anything to worry about it. It's in transit, it's so-and-so's responsibility. It's so clear that you say, this will never be covered. I mean, this is a clear picture. And you know what I have to say, Bonnie? <clears throat> I may have been guilty of sending that. And I was lucky that there was no claims. There was no damage. Mm -hmm. But making sure that you secure your cargo is important. I love the scenarios that you and Hader brought today because there are four different scenarios where insurance kicked in at different times, right? What general average, when we talked about with Hader, um, making sure that the insurance company for the automakers was there. And then this last really hit home for me. Because we see this on a day-to-day -day basis. We could be driving around, look to the side, and we know that that cargo is not secured correctly. A bad turn or brakes will go ahead and make sure that that insurance is maybe denied, right? That claim because of the responsibility of the freight forwarder. So thank you. I appreciate that. I think it brings forth so much more clarity in what we're doing. Um, as we move on, we want to have a little bit of a survey uh, we want to uh, ask you if you're interested in learning more about the like, guy insurance. I know there was a lot of information that was shared, and I love that. I love Vanessa, and I love Heather, how much data they have regarding insurance. This is a passion for them, and we want to talk to you about it and take some time to do that. So our poll question is, are you interested in learning more about the guy insurance services? Yes or no. If you vote yes, we will definitely pay you a visit. We'd love to visit you if you're in South Florida. Uh, if you're not in South Florida and Vanessa wants to travel, trust me, she will be there. But we'll love to go ahead and visit you. And if you say no, not at this time, don't worry about it. We'll definitely send you all the necessary information for you to start uh, working with that. So while this poll is going on, we want to go ahead and, uh, and, and Vanna and Hader, uh, tell me a little bit about the other insurances that you do, because you just don't do cargo insurance. This is important for my clients, right? This is important for my guy clients, but you also do other insurance that's not cargo, correct? That is correct, Jose. So we don't all, we don't only offer cargo insurance. We offer a, a wide variety of of coverage and, and and policies. Like for example, we offer different type of bonds, like NVOCC bonds, FNC freight forwarders, IBEC, FMCSA bonds, single entry bonds. We also offer general liability, excess liability, errors and omissions, warehouse all risk and warehouse legal, commercial property commercial auto, workers' compensation. So anything that our customer needs to operate, we can help them to get the proper coverage. That's fantastic. That's a whole lot of coverage there. You know, a lot of my customers reach out to me and say, hey, Jose, um, I'm opening up a new warehouse. Can Magaya Insurance do X, Y, or Z? So it's really nice to, to hear that that is definitely right on that. Um, so beautiful, beautiful. I have a, I have... 
an opportunity, I think, for for you guys to talk to one of my clients who just opened up a warehouse. So we'll definitely work with them on on bringing that over to you. So let's get to our uh, thank you for all of you who participated in the survey. Let's let's continue. Uh, we're, we've reached our Q&A section, which is great. And uh, we do have a couple questions here. Um, hey there, uh, this one here says, uh, I'm a freight forwarder and one of my customers rejected cargo insurance because they have their own insurance. Uh, cargo, what happens if cargo gets damaged during transportation? Okay, um, even if the customer have their own, claim they have their own insurance, you need to be due diligence. So if you offer coverage, you act it correctly. But if your customer rejected coverage, you need to document it. No matter what happened, everything needs to be in writing to cover yourself. Having proof in writing that it's not that is not going to prevent you from getting sued, but it will help a lot in case that you get into a legal process. So another coverage that you that will help you on uh, against the lawsuit will be an errors and omission, which we can we can help you to also to obtain. Perfect. You know, it's amazing that you say that. You know, one of the things that we've added in the Magaya system was that document. And I remember you brought it up saying, hey, we need a document in Magaya that says this customer is going to sign that they decline insurance. So that's very, very important to do that. Um, we have another question here for Ms. Uh, Rodriguez. She says, what are security requirements to coverage goods that are that have inland transits in Latin American countries or insurances only takes coverage to a destination port? So I guess it's a two question uh, uh, request here. So what are the security requirements uh, for goods that are having inland transportation in Latin American countries? And I guess you're going to ask either what Latin American countries, right? Um, that That's an interesting question. We are getting, I mean, we recently are getting a lot of requests uh, for coverage in inland transportation and in Latin America. So unfortunately, we don't cover pure inland transportation in Latin America. We cover door to door. So we cover the inland part if it is the inland transit, if it is part of the entire uh, and the, the, the entire transportation. Let, let's say as an example, so something start here in Miami and, and goes to uh, Costa Rica and, and then in Costa Rica gets delivered in, in, in one of the cities. So we offer the door to door. But if you want to move something, in Mexico, for example, from, from one place to the another one, or you want to go from Mexico to the United States by ground. And no, unfortunately, we don't we don't offer that type of service yet. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you, Heather. Uh, we also have a question from Mr. Jimenez. Is your insurance coverage worldwide? Yes. We we cover from any origin to any destination in the world. So or if 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 it is uh, air shipment or ocean shipment, it is worldwide. And in case of inland, we cover United States and Canada. Beautiful. Pure inland. Beautiful. Perfect. I have someone here says, I have a lot of electronic uh, equipment. Can I get these uh, this electronic equ equipment covered while they are in my warehouse and not in transportation? Yes, you can. Um, you can get it covered. Uh, but you need a uh, a warehouse all risk coverage to get them covered while they're in store. Uh, you can also get it covered if you insure the cargo, but um, it would only be covered for 30 days. But if you want it for the whole um, X amount of, of per a period of time, if it's more than 30 days, you would need a specific coverage for, for your cargo while you have it in your warehouse. And that would be a warehouse all risk coverage, which we can also help you with that. Beautiful. Perfect. That's great. Thank you, Vani. Uh, this is a, this is an interesting one. I like this one. Um, receiving documentation on time from the carriers may take a little, may take a long time, right? More for ocean and air. Uh, can I ensure the cargo after it leaves or while in transit? You uh, can, but um, it is ideal to do it before it leaves. Um, usually, if you don't get the documentation from the carrier, usually you would get a booking number or a booking confirmation. And with that booking confirmation, you will have all the information that you need to ensure the cargo. So with a booking, we can go ahead and, and issue a certificate. Beautiful. Thank you, Ronnie. This is one that I think a lot of people are afraid of, right? Uh, I had a claim that was not paid in full. 
what happened? You know, what 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 are some of the reasons for this scenario? Right? I think everyone thinks of worst case scenario, right? I didn't get paid in full. Um, well, this could be uh, for several reasons. You know, you have to check that the amount shown on invoices matches the amount insured. So you need to insure 100 or 110 percent, but never less than that. If your amount insured does not match, then it's either because you underinsured or overinsured. So the insurance company can penalize for not insuring correctly. Another reason could be the conditions of the cargo. There are some types of cargo like computers, vehicles, ceramic, glass, and others that are subject to deductibles. And once it's confirmed the amount of the claim, then deductible will be applied to get the final payment amount. And this is why you should always read the conditions. Another reason um, is to inform that you have a potential claim on time and not informing on time can lead to a claim denial and customers need to follow the claim process as indicated by the agent. You know, the best way to get a claim paid is to cooperate and submit all documentation required by the insurance company on time. I love that. I, I love how you keep bringing that up, Vanessa. To me, it's it's so important, right? The timing of it. Sometimes we we leave that last and it should be one of the first things that we do. The more timely we do things, the better it is. Beautiful. Ms. Rodriguez has another question. Uh, the insurance policies, can they be done inside the Magaya system or do we have to generate them outside Magaya? Um, okay, if, if, if Ms. Rodriguez is referring to the certificate, yes, it could be done inside Magaya. So for one one shipment, you can ensure that shipment inside Magaya. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great feature that Magaya has that you can have all the documentation there. You can ensure your cargo directly from the system. Okay, but if if it is in in reference to other type of policies like warehouse or risk, etc., so those one needs to be um, I mean they needs to contact us and we're gonna help them to obtain those policies. Perfect. Thank you. You know, I, I love that. You know, when 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 that idea came out, Heather, and I remember you've been with it from, from the get go, and Vanessa as well. It really makes a big difference because the customers working on that, right? They have the necessary documentation. Uh, they they can work really well in getting that specific certificate right out of the system. So to me, Mr. Man, is that and Ms. Rodriguez, excuse me, it's a fantastic way of doing it. If you haven't done it yet, please. Please let Vanessa and Heather go by and see you. They're definitely going to change the way you look at insurance. They did it for me, and I was a freight forwarder for, for, for a long time. So Mr. Jimenez has another question. Um, is the Magai insurance coverage system automated to receive print insurance certificates immediately? Oh, I love that question. Heather or Vanessa? Yes, it's um, uh, the, the, I mean, the system is automated and it's, uh, you have to go into the features so that you get the insurance certificate immediately. Just by, you know, a few clicks away, you would get the insurance right there. And it, you would also get the charges are, are going to be generated automatically. And um, if you decide not to use uh, the, the Magaya system, you can also do it through the portal. We have a, a, a website and through the portal, you can do exactly the same. Beautiful. You know, um, I won't say my age, but I used to have to calculate, Vanessa, the whole insurance, 110% in the calculator back in the day. So it's really nice when you showed that to me last time, I was floored. I was like, wow, I literally can throw away my calculator now because I can figure out what that insurance is going to be like. So thank you. We have a few more questions, but we definitely want to let you get back into your day to day. Vanessa, Heather, Thank you very much. And thank all of our customers who, who joined us today. This has been enlightening. This has been great. I love talking insurance and how to better assist our customers do what they do better. That's really what Magai Insurance Services is for. Think of it not just for cargo, but also being able to help you with your warehouse as you grow, right? There's a lot of services that Heather and Vanessa talked about while we're doing the survey that helps your business grow. So please go to magaiinsurance.com. Uh, you can email us at info at and you can also give us a call at 786-363-0500. Vanessa, Heather, you guys are fantastic. I love speaking insurance with you. We'll do it again soon. Uh, Mr. Jimenez, uh, Mr. Julius, we're going to go ahead and 
make sure we give you a call to help you out and show you how to work with all these things. So everyone else, um, I know that I, I may have missed a couple. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have yourself a great day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Bye-bye.